Hello everyone, my name is Pavel Kozo, and in previous tutorials of our particle series, we have learned how to use these particle instruments and how to implement it into your project. And in this tutorial, we will actually create it from scratch, because, well, this setup needs some explaining. But actually, when you learn how things work, it is pretty easy to understand and well to replicate it yourself for your project. So without further ado, let's jump into it. And before we actually start, let's draw a little plan. What actually are particles? How particles work? Well, first, the particle is being created. And it is not just being created, it is actually being cloned from already existing object or instance. So first we need to have the object which will be clones. The second one is to make the particle move. For us we need it to move upwards because well the steam or smoke mostly rises up. And that's exactly what we need to do and to animate it. Actually, smoke particles often behave like that, that when they go further up, they become smaller and smaller. That is to make them disappear quicker. We will take this also in consideration. And the third part, when a particle reached its peak and it's on its up, we need to delete it, because when we will create new particles and they will be stacked up and piled up, we will reach our memory capacity. And that is basically all. These are particles simplified. We only have three steps. First, we clone the object and create an instance. Second, we move this instance up and scale it a bit. And third, when a particle finishes its path, we need to delete it. We will be using the same setup that we have used previously. We have a particle which is tracked to a camera. I deleted the material, making it only white, so it will be easier to track how the particles behave. We can always change it back later to the normal particle material, just like we have set up in previous tutorial. The particle will be called 1. We have also 3 and 2, but we don't need them. Here is our clean setup after exporting it to verse 3D. This particle, called 1, will be our instance. But first, we need to actually hide the instances, because they will be visible, they will stay in place and we don't want that. For that, let's go to object hides and just hide all of them. 1, 2, and 3. Alright, nothing is visible. Then we need to clone the one a particle. Let's actually hide it somewhere there. And go to objects and use clone object. Here we can choose one. When we press start and reload it, we will have our plane clones and it has the same properties. As you can see it also rotates towards the camera. It is an instance of this object, one. But now you may notice that we have one more object, which is called one two. That is the instance. The instances, when we are cloning an object, are called by the same name with a postfix, which has a numerical value. Two, three, four, and so on. Now to demonstrate it, let's copy this puzzle. Again, save and reload the page. 
So now we have the third instance, one, three. All right, so that's how it works. Let's delete it. And that is actually our first step from our plan. We have created an instance. Now we need to make it move. For that, let's go to animation, select animates per M, then to object, set puzzle. All right, we'll animate per M to one with duration two. And as an object, we will use one, two, our particle. So here we also will need updated value. By Z axis, we want it to move upwards. So let's start it. And now it moves upwards. So we have the second part of our plan working. Now we need to delete this particle. For that, we again go to objects, remove object, and select here one, two. Also, you may have noticed that we have here one, three, another instance. It happens each time when we press play. That is exactly why we need to reload the page each time we change and save puzzles, so we will not have these overflowed particles. Alright, after reloading the page, one, two is missing. That is because it was removed almost instantly. So we need to give it some time. For that, we need to go to Time Puzzles and select After Seconds. Here we have duration set to 2, so let's give it a little bit less time. So let's say 1.9 seconds. Let's save and reload. And now everything works perfectly and we don't have any overflow. Now we need to make it a cycle to repeat it. For that let's go to time and scrap every second puzzle. Well now clone object is left behind because we need something here. Right? We can just plug it in here. So for that I use just show. We can do it like this, like that, and set it of course to every 2 seconds, because we have duration 2. Now let's see. Alright, works perfectly. Now let's not forget about the scale. Let's copy this setup, change it to scale and set animates per M from 1 to 0. And now let's copy updated values to all of the axes. So when it goes up, it will become smaller. Okay, works as intended, just what we wanted. And well, now goes the hard part. We need to replicate this setup many times. Let's try it once. Let's copy it and start it after one second. So they kind of work in parallel. That will double our particle count. But now here we will need another one, which will be called one three. Let's actually start it. So it will add another instance to our scene and select 1, 3 in each field. Alright, don't worry about it going a little bit overboard, uh, we will not have troubles unless we have like hundreds of them. And right now the speed it is adding is pretty slow, so we don't need to worry so far. When we save and reload the file, all the unwanted instances will be gone. And here we go, now we have more particles. But, well, we have only two instances so far. And for a good smoke or steam or other particle systems, 
we will need like tens of them or even hundreds. And well, now this setup doesn't look too good. Imagine this whole thing being multiplied many 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 times. For each particle we will need the whole setup like that and we will set it up manually, each one of them. And <laughs> well, I did it previously and it is not very nice. As you can see, timing for each instance is set manually. 0.7 seconds, 0.5 seconds. It was a pain and it is not a good solution. So we will need some other more convenient way to do so. Introducing procedures. Well, first let's clean a little bit up. We will need only one instance. And now let's go to procedures, puzzles and add a procedure. Let's call it clone particle. Now our cycle goes into the procedure. And here we will add an input. Input name will be particle. This is to combat our first main problem. We have this 1, 2, 1, 3 and such and we need to select them manually for each cycle. And we certainly don't want it. First, we will not need this show here. So, let's salvage clan object and just delete the show. We will do something much, much better. Now again in procedures, let's grab this puzzle and we have input particle. That is where clone object goes. So now we are cloning the object and placing it into particle variable. And we can use this variable as a target for set puzzle. Let's grab it and place it here, here and here. The procedure on the left is our, so to say, engine. So we need it to start every two seconds, not our cycle. And let's plug our cycle back into the procedure. Now in our cycle we need to show the instance. So let's go back to objects, grab show puzzle and place it here with particle as a target. Alright, now our setup is done, let's save and reload. And works as intended. But now we have a huge advantage. If we change the seconds count, we can control the density of the particles. The procedure will automatically end infinitely, call the cycle, each seconds count that we have set. We can even put in smaller numbers, and it will still work. So right here we have the cleanest and easiest particle setup. Now all we do is basically adding more features and making it more convenient. So right now duration number in this puzzle is basically a lifetime of the particle and it is set manually. So it is the time from when the particle was born until it reaches its peak and it is being deleted and new particle is being created. So if we want to change it we will need to change several fields, not great. Let's create another variable and call it lifetime. We will set lifetime to 2 seconds and plug this variable into the duration. Now here, let's not leave it at 1.9 seconds. It will not work with low numbers. Let's create an expression for it, which will be lifetime minus 
0.1 seconds. Actually, let's make it even smaller, 0.05 seconds. Let's save and reload to make sure that we didn't break anything. And we didn't, works as intended. Now let's play a little bit with this parameter. It is our density and it helps us to control the number of particles. So when we set it to something very low, we will have a ton of particles. We can actually see how many particles here. So we have about 21 particles. All right, now let's jump into the setup from the previous tutorial and walk through control panel. Scale parameter is basically initial particle scale. We can easily change it. Let's look at the speed. Basically, we just plug it here into Z axis. By the way, in this setup, I'm not using updated value, but if we use updated value, we will just need to plug speed variable right here. All right. The next parameter is randomness. Randomness is a little bit trickier. Let's go back to our file and recreate it. Right now all the particles are moving in kind of linear fashion. They create this sort of triangle and we don't want it. So we want to create some movement diversity. This will be done by creating a little offset on X and Y axis. So let's go here into procedure settings and add two more inputs X shift and Y shift. Now we have X shift and Y shift inputs on the left as well. So let's add some randomness into them. Let's go to numbers and select random fraction. Random fraction generates a random number between 0 and 1 each frame. So we can just plug random fraction into X shift and Y shift inputs. And now we need to implement these variables into our cycle. Let's go to variables, drag the variables X shift and Y shift into our puzzle setup and just drag them into X and Y position on animate parameter position. If we start, we can already see the randomness going on. But it doesn't work as you want it to. You may notice that it goes only to one side. Actually, it goes diagonally on both axes. But we want it to work both directions. That is happening because random fraction generates numbers from 0 to 1. And to work on all directions, we need negative numbers as well. So we need to set it to be from minus 0.5 to plus 0.5. It is easily achievable if we just subtract 0.5 from random fraction. Let's copy it and place into both inputs. Ok, and now it works as intended, but it is a little bit too much, we need to control it. So that's where our new variable randomness comes in. Let's add it. Let's drag them into puzzle setup. And set randomness for now to 1. And now let's just multiply our X shift and Y shift by randomness. And let's save and reload. As we have set randomness to 1, right now it is not changing. 
but if we set it to something else, we will see it changing. And this is our randomness effect. It is pretty easy and works very nicely. The next effect is lifetime, but we already have the lifetime and we know what it is. So let's talk about size change. Size change defines behavior of particles, how they change in size with time. Right now it works somewhat linearly. When the particle is born, it starts slowly changing its size downwards, right until its lifetime end. But we may want some other behavior, maybe we want it to become bigger or become smaller even quicker. So we need a variable for that. Let's add the variable and call it size change. In this setup, I will use pretty simple example. Let's say set it to 2, so it will be going up. Here we will just need to use this variable uh, here. So we animate from 1 to size change. So we have set them to 2 and now they become bigger. If we set them to 1, they will just stay the same. And if we set it to negative, like minus 1, they will be growing smaller much faster. And if we set them to 0, that will bring back their standard behavior. So that is our size change option. That is how we control the size of the particle. And the last instrument on control panel is density. It defines, well, how many particles we have. Here in this big setup I use it more trickily, I divide lifetime by density, uh, put it into another variable, but we don't need it in our simple setup. Here we already can control density with this number. So let's just create a variable for the control panel. Right now it is a little bit counterintuitive. More density means more numbers. But now we need to set density to smaller numbers to have more particles. So it will be more convenient to reverse it. And it is actually pretty easy. We just need to divide 1 by density. And well, what that will do. Right now density is how often we call a new particle, so each 0.1 seconds. And this setup helps us to present density more logically. So if we divide 1 by 10, it will become 0.1. If we divide 1 by 2, it will become 0.5 and so on. So technically it will stay the same with more convenient presentation. Let's try it with 1. And well, <laughs> yeah, let's not divide it by 0. Alright, and now with density being 1, we have 1 particle each second. And if we set it to 10, we will have, well, 10 particles each second. But also remember not to set them too much, because, well, it will become laggy, there will be too much instances, too much particles, and we don't want that. It works fine with not too much particles. Now let's talk about particles placing in a scene. Right now it is a little bit to the left from the flame. That is because particles spawn in the center of coordinates and center is a little bit to the left from the flame, just like we see here. The first logical conclusion will be to just snap a 
particle to the object that it needs to spawn from. Let's try it. Snap particle to object flame. And, well, it doesn't work right away. It is because we animate params from 0 to 2, and 0 is the sensor of coordinates, the global sensor. So, even if we snap it to flame, it still jumps to sensor, to global 0. To fix this, we need to snap outside our cycle. So, let's drag the snap to the side. Now we need to manually copy the coordinates of the flame to the particle. For that, we will need another variable. Let's call it snap. This variable will be some kind of in-between entity between flame coordinates and particle coordinates. The first step will be to unplug clone object from the particle and define our snap variable as clone object. So we will put the clone object first into the snap variable. The second step is to snap well, our snap particle to object flame. And now we need to redirect the instance that is in a snap with right coordinates back to the particle. And now we need to add these snapping coordinates into the X shift and Y shift to make them start not from zero but from the specified coordinates which are now in snap. So let's add uh, another number, place it all here and here we will get the position of the snap. by x-axis. Now we have the coordinates from snap, which is now snapped to object flame. So now in x-shift we already automatically have the right starting coordinates. Now let's just duplicate this whole setup and set the same for y-shift. And, well, it will work right away. Let's try it. And now all our particles start right from the flame, exactly what we need. But what about Z coordinates? I have actually sneakily added this setup, so when we click the torch, we play the animation of rotato, and it rotates the torch. That is to check if the snapping works correctly. So let's click and well it works but not on Z axis and it makes sense because Z starts from zero. So we need to do the same for Z axis. Let's add another procedural input. We will call it Z shift. And actually we can just duplicate this setup but it will also add some randomness to Z axis and I don't want it. So I'll just take this part, set it to Z and we will need another expression for Z axis. Here we will add Z shift to update its value. Let's save and reload. Now when we start the animation, we can see that the particles start from the right place. Again, I did it a little bit differently in my big setup, but for your own setup it is the quickest and fastest way to do so. Alright, and now everything that is left to do is to set up our material, because right now it is white emission. 
So let's go to Blender, to Shader, and set up the correct output. Now we export it. And reload to see our final result. And here we go, everything works perfectly. And again, I did it only with one particle, with one instance. We have also two and three, we just need to repeat the same for these particles as well. As you may remember from previous tutorial, they are rotated and they bring in even more randomness and more density. So the final result will be three times as dense. Also in big setup, we had a possibility to change the direction of the smoke. For that we can just duplicate the animate param position, place it here. Here we will set how much it deviates. And now let's delete all the shifts and plug in updated value on the axis that we want it to move. Now let's save and reload. Actually I think 0.1 is a little bit too small. Let's set it to 1. And here we can see that it seems to work nicely. But if we check it with animation, we will see that it doesn't shift like we want to, because here we also need our shift setup. Let's go to numbers. And set here X shift plus updated value. And as always, save and reload. Alright, and now everything works as we need it to work. The small goes a little bit to the side, while the particles are being snapped to the flame. And that is all for this setup. As you can see, it is not too difficult. It may be a little bit too technical, but still, when you know what's going on, it is pretty easy to recreate and to implement it in your own project. Or, of course, you can always download the ready-to-use setup from the description below or from the forums. And that is all. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next tutorial.